Welcome back awesome awesome people like I I like to call everyone going forward clarifiers because that's that's what this channel is all about the uh, that's the name of my YouTube channel the clarifiers helping people clarify their next life direction is where I began and Anthony just got on live views is a kick right into gear today he'll be sharing I, uh, yesterday's lesson, he'll be sh teaching it to me, and I'll be taking notes like a what's beginner, up, and there he up? is! Yo, yo, how, how feel you today? I feel good. I, um, I was doing a backsplash in a kitchen that I had personally measured and designed almost a year, maybe a year plus ago, but the times never worked out to actually get it done. So a couple of weeks back, she's like, I'm ordering the tile. You're going to be free one of these weekends? I'm like, yeah, just let me know. And it happened to come in this weekend. So I got all the tile in except the red pattern tile that we got nine exact of. One of them happened to be cracked. So I did install the centerpiece, which ties it all in. But as that happened, it was cool because I realized I could make my own custom centerpiece using a copper coil, which is the, some of the stuff that she likes that I make and put it with epoxy and make my own little tile so that way the centerpiece will have a red background that matches the tiles but then i'll have a copper coil so it'll be right about eye to chest heart height so that was really cool it was just like a way of seeing how whenever anything goes wrong think of how it's actually like the best thing ever and think of a creative solution of how you can make it like even better than you initially thought so, and when I told her the idea, she was thrilled because otherwise she'd have to, or, the tile we ordered is really cheap. So it's like 96 cents. So ordering another nine is not an issue, but you know, it's going to take a couple weeks. So it's like, it'd be quicker for me to make my own and it'd be cool. And it'd be something she'd remember forever. So it's a dear friend. So that was really cool. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to go back to grout that. So yeah, I uh, finished up and that's why we're starting a little later. Had to get what? home after feeding everything. So nice. I feel really good. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah. Perfect. Ah, man. I'm doing well. Today I had a two-hour session with the uh, social media team for the uh, mayor's race, the uh, kind nice, prosecutor. Nice. So I think we've, we've really nailed down what are the similarities that we know. So one of the, it's, there's three people on the team. Alex, Alexa, and Alexi. <laughs> the three A's, triple A team. Yeah, the A team. We, uh, I was like, the, the, they were saying like, hey, the, the triple A team. I'm like, yeah, the A team. <laughs> <laughs> so we're really pushing for really getting the um, our messaging straight. What are we standing for? We jump to the future, to the past. If we didn't win, if we did win, what will we continue doing? And how? what's the message? What are we going to be actually doing? What have we been doing? It's been cool. That was a two-hour session, Damn, and then here we are. Awesome. That's uh, so yeah, right up until hit now. Here we are. Today's yeah. May second, right? Yeah, two days away from my favorite day of the year. No, sorry, that was in March is my favorite day, but May the Fourth be with you is a silly <laughs> day. <laughs> That's yeah, it's the fourth, not the reminds fifth. yeah. Well, yeah. So isn't Cinco de Mayo the fifth? Oh yeah, that's right. Right after me, the fourth year of the <laughs> day of the dead. Okay, let's focus Anyways, today. Yeah. Today is focusing on. Let's uh, introduce ourselves, Anthony. Introduce so yourself. So I am Anthony Desatnikov. I'm what I call myself a student of life, and basically, a student of life is somebody who is constantly looking for patterns and lessons in their everyday experiences and teaches life like a school. Um, so that's who I am at the core, and I'm um, working on improving myself and dealing with my subconscious programs, which is why me and Alexi are doing this. For work, I do construction work for a custom home building company in Saratoga, Bella Home Builders. And um, yeah, I do side work on the side. I build copper coils and experiment with new designs and things. So that's who I am. Awesome. Well, welcome. My name is Alexi and I, uh, I am a clarifier. I love helping people learn to understand things. Uh, concept, principles, it's always been something with me. And I love helping people right now. My big focus is on helping people learn the science of achievement. Some call it success, progress. It's all under the same hood, under the same umbrella. That's what I love helping Manifestation people do. Manifestation, too, if you want to use a more out there term. Yeah, same all concept, that. So. 
there's a science to it. And some people, somebody asked me like, yeah, but you never made a lot of money. I'm like, that's right. That's why I don't teach anything about money. <laughs> I'm specifically teaching about success, personal progress and what that looks like and how to get it and how to achieve it step by step. And so, yeah. So to be clear right now, it's not you're, you're not, this. you're not about the end goal. You're about the process of getting to the end goal. So essentially you're yeah. like one step behind. Money is not my, my uh, big thing, meaning that's not something I can teach now, maybe in about a few years, once I do start making good, healthy living off of doing this, because this is my true passion. And that's what led me to start the clarifiers, is people telling me, you're really good at this, you're really good at this. And then last July, I started zooming in, zooming in. I'm like, yeah, I, I got to break through this and uh, make it happen. That's what I'm doing. This is what this process is. Clarifiers helping you learn how to clarify things for people, helping them understand. And today, Anthony is going to be leading me through yesterday's lesson. So I'll be the student and he will be the teacher. And that's how we've been doing it, guys. I share something and the following day. He, it, the, we flip the tables and he teaches me. The next day, it's the next step I, I share. And then because that helps the person who you're helping, teaching or mentoring, it helps them better solidify the lesson. Because now they're in the hot seat to explain it to you. Alrighty, one sec. I'm just getting. My... So I am. I, while Anthony's getting ready, I just. I'm literally, guys, starting with paper myself. I'm not just sitting and listening to Anthony. I'm going to be actually getting into the hot seat of a student and writing this stuff down and just using my brain to pretend I know nothing of what is about to be spoken. That way, I can actually include things into the process going forward that will make it easier and better to understand. So, yep. I'm ready, Tony, whenever you are. One sec. I got a paper. I got my G2 pen. My G2 pens. Oh, my goodness. This pen is almost uh, two, two-thirds of the way emptied. I've been really using it. <laughs> that's, when you yeah. know, that's when you know you're using your pen, when it starts emptying out that fast. So you ready? I'm ready. So basically what I will be explaining today is we're going to go all the way back to the beginning, the, the 50,000 foot view. Before we were like, you know, going through the dirt and bugs. Then we zoomed out to the forest. From the forest, we zoomed out a little higher. And this is the overarching view. So the first thing we're going to, the concept we're going to become familiar with is the basic image of the mind. Or image of mind. There we go. Now there's a doctor. Uh, is it Thurman? Mm -hmm. We. Yeah. Yeah. Do you can you read his quote that you paraphrased yesterday? Uh. Well, you know it. You just paraphrase it. You're good. Essentially, the mind is chaos before you give it an image. An image illuminates the mind. So whenever you're having emotions or feelings and you're in that chaotic state, in order to get clarity, you need to have an image in the mind. So we're going to draw an image, this basic image of the mind. So we start so off with it. a circle. <laughs> you uh, had it. Circle with a horizontal line dividing it in half. Now, this top portion represents the conscious mind and that's our physical senses right there now the bottom portion right here this represents the subconscious mind Now, the subconscious mind is responsible for body functions, habits, walking, driving. Have you ever had the experience where um, you are walking somewhere and you get lost in thought or if you listen to music like I do, sometimes you get so lost in thought that 
you end up arriving at your final destination, but you don't really remember how you got there for the last portion of it. Yeah. Or same with driving. And that's because <laughs> yeah. you were running off of your subconscious mind. It was just, it, it knew where it needed to go, and it kept going. And it, it didn't involve your conscious mind and awareness. So th those are the two aspects of the mind. So we're going to draw a line now that we have this little image over here. Now, so the goal right now is all our programs are stored in the subconscious mind. And they are activated by thoughts, feelings, and certain images. So let's draw out an, an example of how a thought begins to manifest. So we have this stick figure dude right here. He starts thinking thought A. We'll just call it A for now. And basically, A is you think And what that equals is, I want A. That's how our body interprets that, that thought. So then two, life comes together. To create an environment for thought A to be the outcome. So, so life comes together. Life comes to together okay, to create an environment. Environment, uh huh. For thought A our mm -hmm. desire to be the outcome. And by outcome we're we're referencing to experience. experience a so how it let, let's draw it how this kind of happens actually so we draw the stick figure guy a little lower here again so he's thinking 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 he gets thought a so thought a how it basically manifests is through a bunch of different ways so it'll you got the same guy here he's thinking still so he has one thing that leads to one, and he has, you know, something else leads, another event leads to two, and then to three, four, five, and there's no real particular reason, but after it reaches point five, A is now um, able to be made real. made real. So the experience is the end result. The experience of thought A. So now what is so, the experience? The, okay, yeah, I guess you're going to answer that right now. Yep. So this up here was one. So two is the now, and this is going to be emphasize with the stars the now um, one, one of the things Anthony I got a uh -huh. question you just wrote that experience it kind of either you're missing something or I missed something can you what is that? oh okay I forgot to so this whole uh, let me backtrack a little bit so this whole process of one to two to three to four to five and now a is able to become real that summarized is reference to the experience. So this is the thought right here. Okay. This is the process of that thought becoming the experience. And this is the outcome right here. Does that make, does that make it a little bit easier to explain? Yes. All right, perfect. I, I like how you just said you just divided that there's a thought process, there's a experience, and then there is the potential for the initial thought to become the outcome. Yes.
it's not the, so you're saying it's not the outcome but it's the potential for the outcome to happen or thought a i mean essentially it is the outcome but we'll do potentially potential outcome so it either is or a it, it's either the outcome or a potential to make the thought to become the outcome I think in my opinion the outcome it becomes real because once you've experienced it it's real. Well, here's what I'm I'm actually asking a different question. Uh -huh. Let me rephrase that. So all these experiences happened and now you life sets it up for you. So all those experiences happened so that whatever thought A was can come to reality. So sometimes okay, it's yeah. just a so setup. Okay, so it's potential. Sometimes it's a setup for so yeah. There reality. we go. The, the experience is a setup. We'll put that in ex parentheses. Is the setup to make a a potential outcome? Is that a little bit easier to understand now? Yes. Like uh, that. On a complete side note, guys, this is like let's uh, back into Alexi mode here. This is the beauty of having somebody else share the things as like you teach somebody and then have it teach them back to you. This right here, I did not have this yesterday, but the way Anthony just explained it, just like oh, I am totally adding that in. That is beautiful. So I'm always learning just as much when I get taught the same thing I taught the uh, the day before. So it's beautiful. But back to back to a uh, uh, student, Alexi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sweet. So we'll move on to now step two below that, which is the now. The now equals the experience. Put experience in parentheses. Experience happened. Can you move the paper, your paper, a little higher? Uh, yeah, because on the screen there's a bunch of words that are blocking you. Yep. You're saying yeah, a little so more the, higher. Yeah, that's perfect. So the you see that dark dot on the top left on the table the the uh, the knot this where yep that's the top of the screen so you, okay. and the bo bottom Perfect. of the screen is that little where your pinky well where your ring finger is right now or your pinky yep ring finger middle finger yep okay, okay got it so Perfect. between those two Perfect All right so now the experience happened so that thought A could become a reality. Can you read number two? It says now and then what? Now equals uh -huh. the experience, and experience is in parentheses, happened so that, so that thought A could become a reality. become a, rea a reality yeah it's still referencing to up here where we draw it. it's the potential outcome yep so this is just kind of clarifying it in a di little different way but referencing it to the term now so the next thing that we need to look on is the emotion uh, that emotions of the experience is where things take a turn so this is an important part we'll just put it in a star and circle it and so the emotions, and we're going to underline emotions because it's an important word we're going to reference back to. The emotions of the experience and we're going to underline that too, is where things take a turn. Take a turn because we get attached to to the emotions. We so, and when we get attached to the emotions, particularly if it's like a negative experience, 
What this will lead to is a concept we will refer to as blaming the players. And players will put in parentheses and underline because that's an important thing. So we begin blaming the players instead of So the players, as in like uh, characters. So that so say characters. you had say in the experience that we referenced to later, I'd say at point two you have an involvement with some people and there's an altercation or something or an unpleasant thing. Yeah. What ends up happening is when we blame the players, we will be blaming that person in that part of that experience for why we felt bad and things were terrible. Okay. And essentially, the, the the reason that's bad is instead we we become we we begin blaming the players instead of taking authorship. So we blame the players instead taking authorship of how. Our imagination created it all. So, and that's the really crazy part is when we blame other people, we give up our ownership, we're forgetting that we're the author of our experiences because our thought is what generated it. So that's what this diagram is important to understand. It's like your thought generates the experience because the experience is helping thought A to become real. So say you want to experience a certain emotion and you know, you're lacking, connect, uh, you're craving connection, you have that thought. You might then have some experiences that you completely don't see coming that lead to someone coming into your life that you so you can have that connection but it might not be how you expected and so it you meet somebody and it gives you the opportunity to actually meet you know develop a deeper connection and a friendship of some sort so that's an example but when we are doing this and not taking authorship so the only thing we learn from this whole thing from that experience when we blame other people You know what I just did? Check this out, mm -hmm. Anthony. Uh, I, I liked how you just said that. And the way I imagined it is just like, I wrote, when you blame somebody equals um, authorship and it just crossed out. You see that? Yeah. So I, I'm, the way you explained that, again, I really liked how you explained that. And that's the image that came to my mind. Sweet. Well, that's a good one. I like that. Good thing you wrote it down. So continuing on, the only thing we learn when we're blaming other people so you're saying, oh, write it down. Okay, hold on. Writing so down. the only thing we learn are a few lessons, such as I don't like this person or I should avoid this person or whatever they might be. Lessons, and we'll underline lessons. And as an example, rather is avoid such and such. So basically, when you don't take authorship, you're not going to get the actual gold out of what that experience was trying to accomplish. And what you pull out of it is really just not of almost no value. So we're going to continue on to the next portion. I'll draw a line like this for now. So this is now going to be point three right here continue so over here we had one two and now this is three i just drew a line so it'll be easy to see the difference so our emotions equal what we call and we'll refer to later on is as boom moments And I guess you could say BM for short. So, and what boom moments are, 
these are our current programs. that are running in our subconscious mind. Mind. So, once we understand this, the, the emotions that we experience are generated from the thought leading to the experience, in that experience we experience different emotions and sometimes those emotions are unpleasant. So whenever we have say triggers or something sparks up an emotional state that's not desirable, say like you know you you hear a song or you experience something or and then all of a sudden you have a mood change and you don't want to do something and you just want to give up on whatever you're doing and just quit. Um, that's an old, that could be, that's a boo moment. Um, mm -hmm. Now what we need to do is we need to understand we got to take emotions not as something that's good or bad but as emotions equals treating it like a gauge like a card gauge for your gas or your speedometer Because a gauge isn't good or bad, it just tells you where you're currently at. That's all it does. If you're low on fuel or if you're good on fuel. And what we need to then do is, when we treat it like a gauge, we've got to work backwards. Towards and we'll put this in parentheses, what was my original desire? Uh, so what was my original A thought? Yes. Okay. Well, we can actually write it as, what was my original A thought slash desire? Mm -hmm. Because the thought creates a desire, creates an emotional state but then it makes you want to, or not want to do something. All right, so now this is where it gets really important. So we're going to go back to over here where now A is able to become real. We're going to put a little star with the number one and circle it because we're going to continue on this over here. Let's drop it. Repeat that again. I think I just lost you there. So... Now that we've talked about the emotions, we're going to connect it back to A earlier when we referenced in this process in uh, pr part one, where thought mm -hmm. leads to experience and experience leads to potential outcome. Mm -hmm. At this point that you now have had the experience and A is able to become real, what mm -hmm. typically happens is we get stuck So in, what are you writing? I'll get stuck. Get stuck in an emotion. Emotion is underlined. From the experience. Or from experience. Yeah, from the experience sounds better. So earlier, as you saw, the experience right here generates some emotional state for and that emotional state is supposed to help you make a a reality if you use it but if we get stuck in that emotional state what that ends up happening is is we create a boom moment Referring back to that uh, example I was giving where like you're doing something and all of a sudden you want to just quit and give up out of no reason or you're having an anxiety attack and there's literally nothing around you that should be causing that kind of a emotional reaction. But that's uh, that boo moment is an old program that runs in your subconscious mind that's taking in the stimulus from your 
physical senses in your conscious mind and then interpreting it as that. Now, if you actually understand what your original A thought is, then you have context to the emotions. But many times we just get stuck in the emotions from the experience because we're not, we don't think about thought A or we're not even realizing we're thinking it and desiring it. So we create these boo moments. And now boo moments, if we draw an arrow down, those are paradigms. So that's another word that some people refer to, these boo moments, paradigms, subconscious programming programs. It's all synonymous. So paradigm. And the paradigms are current lines of programming. So, the next key thing to realize is not just realize, but to recognize so recognize and realize you, capital U, were the author all along. And the amazing power of your mind to create. Because when you don't Real, recognize and realize you're the author, you will typically just get stuck in the emotional state and you'll find yourself constantly repeating these endless cycles of behaviors and things that you may not like and trying to change but you keep falling back into old ways. But in order to change that, you first got to realize that you are recognize and realize you are, were the author all along and it was your mind's amazing power to create which caused all these experiences because of thoughts A. So, knowing that, once you realize you're the author, and you recognize that, you can rewrite. So you're writing down rewrite? Yeah, and I put a little arrow down from that little box. So, once you recognize and realize that you were the author all along, you can then, so then, now dropping down, rewrite the negative and negative is in parentheses because that's subjective, experience as something positive. And it's not just something positive, that's, that's more of just a, uh, I guess you could say the opposite inverse to negative, but Say the experience, you, you gave it a bad meaning or you didn't understand how it was actually a good thing. When you recognize and realize you're the author and you go back and you get to the original A thought and desire and you realize like, oh, you'll begin to actually be grateful because you'll see how that experience allowed you to get what you wanted all along. It just didn't happen in the exact way that you might have expected it. So, um, one sec, what did I write here? Another big point, I guess you could say, put it in a star and circle it, is once you've started to rewrite the things, so you have, write this down, you have started to rewrite, and put that in parentheses, rewrite your old and old programming is also in parentheses, old programming. So this is part one. 
which is awareness. Become aware of the fact that you are the author and you can rewrite your old programming. And as soon as you become aware of it, you've already started the process, which is why it's written like this. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to grab a second piece of paper, go like this, I'll go like that. Can you, um, one sec. You can take away the top one. I, we, I, uh, okay. I have it down on mine, so I get it. So I'll start. I get the transition. One. You can see perfect here. All right, sweet. So part two is reminding yourself. Now, why is this important? Because w part one is becoming aware that you're the author and you can rewrite it. But even after you write the code and you set, say, a new program of how you want to act or behave or think or feel about a past experience, your old program is going to come back because it's, we're not like a computer where once you update it, it's done. It's, it's much more gradual and, and our mind is much more intricate than a computer. It's actually one of the what does they say, the uh, most advanced computer in the world. Mm -hmm. Anyways, and it's biological too, interesting. So you, the part two is reminding yourself until... So reminding yourself why this is important until... No, so just reminding yourself and then continue writing on until the code, and code is in parentheses too, or no, quotations, or you can do parentheses, it doesn't matter. The code is 100% updated. Updated. Because you got to remember, the body wants old feelings. Old feelings is underlined in quotations. And because of that, it's going to kick in the old programming that will make you feel the old ways the body's used to. And then this is the important part of where you remind yourself of the new code that you've established, that you've installed. Remind yourself of the new code. And that's also in quotations and underlined. And what this equals down to is now your becoming a pro at rewriting your own brain's programming. Programming. And this is where you have your BAM moment. It's not a boo moment, it's a BAM moment where you, you realize you're the author, you have full power, and you start feeling empowered and encouraged because you realize it's, it's nobody else's fault but your own because of your own desires and thoughts, and you start looking and acting completely differently. So, Whoppa. that right there. I'll put it out like this and just move the camera. Let's give everyone basic image of the bind. What you think? Blah blah blah. The experience. The now equals the experience. So that thought I could become reality. The emotions. Then we jump over here. Our emotions equal the boom moments. These are the current programs that are running our subconscious mind. Emotions should be treated like a gauge and used backwards to get to the original thought A. Getting stuck in emotions continues the loops of boom moments. Boom moments are, in other words, are paradigms, current lines of programming. 
that when you recognize and realize that you're the author all along and the amazing power of your mind to create, you understand that you can rewrite the negative experiences as something positive, and you, at this point, you've started to rewrite your old programming. This is part one, awareness. Part two is reminding yourself until the code is 100% updated. Because the body wants old feelings, it will run the old programming in your subconscious mind until the new code is fully updated in, which can take some time. And whenever the old feelings kick in, old programs, you remind yourself of the new code. As you begin to do this process on a daily point, you are now becoming a pro at rewriting your brain's programming. And that is, bam, your moment of where you realize that you are the author of your life and you have control. Wow, that's what's up. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I definitely added a few things, clarifying points, which is nice. I yeah, like there's effort. It. it was much better. I definitely myself see where there's some confusion points. Um, so I got to think about it. I'm tired, so I don't know today, but I'll, by tomorrow I should have some ideas of how we could possibly improve this a little bit. At least it's just, it keep the same information, but just the flow. So it doesn't feel as um, confusing. Yeah. And I think I got to space out the things a little bit more. Or maybe just go like this down the paper. It'll be easier. But, yeah, that was awesome. That was. That was. I, I definitely like understand it a lot better myself. Um, there's one part. Hold on a second. Um, positive negative word did you say that um, and there's one part uh, when you were talking about rewrite the uh, quote unquote negative experience as something positive mm -hmm. and so I wrote after that is create a new meaning true to its original purpose yeah there you go I like that I like that a lot. Because, yeah, very true. It's like good, bad, it's subjective. Negative, positive, it's objective. Because uh, it's but, only good or bad if you don't realize you're the author. When you're the yeah. author, you realize that it's always good. So if it's always good, there's it can't be subjective. It's just it is. Yeah. It's giving you what you wanted. So. Now, the original desire might be one that's built on a flawed premise. Which is so, why the experience sucks, but... Yeah, you're right. It's, so it's, it's not a good or a bad thing. It's your you desired that. Yeah, you. It's creating a new meaning true to its original purpose. So you rewrite it. Create. Not just to say it's positive, but to create a new. It was, you rewrite it, to remind yourself that, all these experiences were true to its original purpose. Because like. We have thought A, but 99.9% .9 of the time, we have no idea how we're going to get it, good or bad. And so when we go to the experience, we then judge it, not realizing that we authored that experience because of what we desired. Yeah. Yeah. Well, oh, sir, that's what's so, up, brother mine. I'm so. I added that little bit in that. I like yes. that. So I'll be going over through what I wrote yesterday, what what you helped me see today, and updating updating this uh, module. Yeah, on this, it, it's pretty damn close, I think, to completion, because it's it's pretty clear, and we've gotten the. I just think there's maybe a couple little things that we can fine tune, at least in maybe how we organize information. In the sense, I'll show you where. So. This process just needs to be spaced out. There needs to be a bigger space or maybe if I drew a line, you know, a line across here and then a line across here because those are like their own sections so you can refer back to them would make it a little easier. So then there's this area and then from there when we go to three, this is pretty simple. But like over here, they recognize and realize. I think that maybe that should be point four. It is point four. That was okay. that was originally point four. And that clarifies it a lot better. So that I yep. just didn't I didn't get that when I was writing yesterday, 
And then point four emphasizes part one and part two. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, I think it's it's there. One thing I want to do or just put it out there is create a uh, acronym for boom and bam. BM. No, no, create an acronym for it. What's an acronym exactly? I'm so blanking. each word actually, each letter means is a word. Oh. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, give me a sec. So your boom moment has to be with that original negative experience or overwhelm or challenging experience, thought, idea, or feeling. So Something boom like moment. Basic bad. overwhelming. Bad overwhelming. Bad over. Overwhelming. Um, another O. Oh, overwhelming. Oh, this can be interesting. Obtuse moment. <laughs> Some bad, overwhelming, overpowering. Yeah, overpowering is a good one. Obtuse was like a $3 word. <laughs> I know. Moment. Bad, overwhelming, overpowering moment. And then BAM is to be positive. Is... Something of aware of the moment. <laughs> awareness. Maybe. Become awareness. Aware. Awareness mastered. Because that's what you're doing when you're the author. Your awareness, you're mastering your, your mind. You're reprogramming it. So become aware. Awareness. Master. Master. Mr. Master. Become awareness master. Yeah. So you go from feeling feeling bad, overwhelming, overpowered moment to becoming awareness master. Yep. I like those acronyms. That that works perfect. Sweet. And uh it holds true to the uh, the core principle of what we're doing here. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. It's getting more epic by the day. I don't even know why Mario jumped in my head. I haven't played that in years. <laughs> yeah, it just reminded me of all the early Mario days with my brother. Did you guys have the Game Boy Color or just the Game Boy? I mean, whatever the original. The black and white. The black original, and white one? There was color. There was color. Color? Okay. Yeah. He won once the whole game. And at the end of, if you win it the first time, you get a uh, hundred of those things that lets you fly. So you can pretty much fly through the whole thing again. <laughs> yeah, you get the wings and fly above everything. That's awesome. And then you win, you get another 100, and so it's like, you're always going to win after that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, getting in trouble for that. So, yeah, this is awesome. Thank you very much. Definitely learned. And then tomorrow, tomorrow at the same time, at uh, 1 o'clock, and we'll go from there. One four seven. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow will be good because I'll have the backsplash grouted pretty quickly. I'm going yeah, there at like 11.30 and... It's going to be nice. I'll take a I'll take a nice picture and I'll have it on my computer loaded so then I can flip it and you guys can see see Sweet. the handiwork. Well, until tomorrow, it was awesome. Thank you very much, Anthony. And tomorrow, Pleasure. thank you for having me. It's going to be 1 p.m. Hawaii time, 4 p.m. California, and Anthony's time. He's on the East Coast. It's 7 p.m. Yes, sir. Yes, Join sir. us if you can. Yes. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow, bro. Peace. See you tomorrow. Peace, pass. Thank you.